superstars. So today we are here to teach you how to do three suppling exercises. But what I've actually decided to do is to break this into three episodes for you. Break this in to three suppling exercises that can tick the box for every rider. So if you are at the stage where you can only ride a 20 meter circle, then a serpentine is gonna be a really great choice for you, but it also is really good for the warm up for your higher level horses too. So today I'm gonna to talk all about the serpentine. Next week, I'm gonna talk about the 10 meter circle and exactly where you can use that. And then on the third week, I'm gonna talk about leg yield but leg yield at a really higher level. We've already done three episodes on leg yield, but I'm gonna talk about how you can do leg yield in a circle, leg yield in, within, within other big movements like the half pass, so half pass into leg yield, how you can use leg yield to get yourself a better um, canter or a better flying change. So we're gonna do all that in the third week, but this week's all about serpentine. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to use that serpentine in a really gymnastic way to open up your horse's ability to use the training scale. What do we know? We know that rhythm plus suppleness equals connection. So I'm gonna show you how to get this serpentine to really open up the horse's rib cage and really get him to use his suppleness to get him more connected, to get him stretching further. And it's something that all of you can do. It's something that you can really do to keep your horse's minds active, stop them from spooking, you know, be really cool and clever about how you can really use a serpentine to really increase your horse's, not just suppleness, but as a result, his way of going. So guys, the first exercise I'm gonna do is teach you how to use a serpentine. And not just ride a serpentine, but use a serpentine to really help the horse's suppleness. So what do you need before you can do this exercise? You need to be able to ride a 20 meter circle without having your force fall in and out, okay? Once you can do that, you can ride this exercise. Okay, I'm going to show you, it was very hard for us to work out how to show you this angle. So um, I'm going to show you a picture now. This is my beautiful friend, Ash, filming us. We've literally clumbered her up a wall <laughs> to be able to see. But hopefully from this angle, you'll be able to see a little bit the lines. Okay, now the most important thing when you do this exercise is that you don't think that it's got a straight line in between. So I'm going to draw this so you can see it, but quite often, a lot of people think that it's you ride this half a circle and then as you come across the open part of the arena that you ride a straight line and then you turn it again. The way to use this exercise in a real suppling way is it actually kind of looks like an S shape. So you kind of go in and then out and then in again so that across that open side or the middle part of the arena that it looks like the big capital S for Sam. Okay, so I'm going to show you that and um, hopefully you'll be able to see it on the video as well. Okay, all right, so let's get into it. Okay, guys, so nice regular trot. Rhythm is what you're looking for here. Doesn't have to be fast, just so the horse is traveling along itself, okay? Now you can start it wherever you want to, but when you turn off the wall, you think I'm turning a 20 meter, sorry, you're turning a 10 meter circle. Whoop, now I'm not. So it looks a little bit like that snake that we talked about. Same thing again, here I'm turning a 10 meter circle. Whoop, now I'm not. And you saw already in that moment just there, how he really took the contact forward just by using that suppling exercise. Again, we do that again. Do it wherever you want to do it. As you turn, think I'm gonna do a 10 meter circle, but then don't. Oh, and you see there, he actually stopped for a moment because he thought, oh, what's going on? But that's what you want for him to think a little bit. 10 meter circle, whoop, don't. And that little bit of just playing, good boy, with the line like that, gets him to really start to stretch down. And you can see already the difference in the way he's going just from that one little thing. 
You'll have to excuse him, he's a little bit spooky because we just had to literally chase a pigeon out of the arena and you'll see that. 10 minute circle and go. And this is the pigeon. <laughs> and then again, 10 meter circle and 10 meter circle. So you see what you're doing every time, good boy G, every time you change the rain, you're thinking it's almost in two parts, okay? It's almost like you're saying to him, I'm gonna turn a 10 meter circle to the center line. Actually, no, I've changed my mind. Go the other way. And again, I'm gonna turn a 10 meter circle to the center line, no, actually, go the other way. Now, what are the things I'm looking for when I'm doing this? I'm looking that I can feel my train tracks all the time. So I'm moving that bridle so that I'm always connecting, good boy, into both reins evenly. And you can see as we've gotten along, he is doing this better and better and better and getting softer and softer and softer in himself every time we go around. Isn't that cool? And you can see how his stretch has gotten better. Why has his stretch gotten better? Because we've increased his suppleness. It really is that simple. So you can make that bend less or more. So you can go for a really steep one like this. So 10 meters, whoop, change my mind. Good boy. Or you can go for a more subtle one, which has a really shallow S in there. Okay? And you see, just by doing this exercise, I keep him with no message now. Look at how much forward and more stretching he is. That's not because I've asked him to stretch more. That's because the exercise that this provides gives him more suppleness, i.e. gives him much more ability to connect. You can do this in the canter. It's a little bit more advanced, so your horse needs to have counter canter to be able to do it. But again, I come in, I change my mind. Good boy. I come in, I change my mind. There you go. I come in, I change my mind. And my job in that moment is just to say, do I have both sides of his mouth? Is both even or is one different to another? And simply, can I feel the rhythm? Is the rhythm changing too much? And if it is, that's because potentially the angle or the, the S that I'm doing is too deep. <coughs> in the canter, he tries to put his nose a little less forward and more down and round. That's something that you then need to work on. It doesn't mean that today it'll be solved, but it means that you might need to ask him to be a little bit more steep in the turn, like so, so that he takes it out. There you go. And you see the nose then goes out more versus a bit down and deep. Okay, but that's the feeling and that's what you have to decipher while you're riding along good boy, actually, what am I looking to achieve? That's much better. Do you see that? You also see that I'm sitting a little bit to the inside and that's because I want him to go out a little bit onto this hind leg. So again, if you haven't seen my banana analogy, watch it here and that explains that to you a little bit. And you see, just by doing these exercises, he's trying to spook a little bit there, it helps them 
find balance. Good boy. Good. And there he is just looking at the other horse out the back. So that is exercise one. What do you need to have exercise one? You need to be able to turn a 20 meter circle, first thing. Second thing is you need to understand the banana analogy. Third thing is you need to have rhythm. So those are your prerequisites for being able to ride that particular exercise, okay? Once you can do that, you can ride it. So it's something you can ride from a very, very, very early stage and to increase the exercise or make the exercise easier just comes down to how steep you make that letter S. How steep or how big and defined is the letter S or is it just a little bit of a blip, okay? You saw with him, he wanted to duck behind in the canter. So that's where you have to adjust how fast you're going, adjust how much you ask him to turn. What is the measure? It's just a bit of playing. So you saw with G, he really did it quite well in the trot and it really worked very quickly. But in the canter, he actually ducked a little bit behind the vertical and tried to go low, but too deep and too, too much towards his chest. So actually then I adjusted it a little bit and got him to bring his neck a bit higher, but his nose a bit more out, okay? And people might ask me, how do you do that? And I know this might sound oversimplistic, but you just adjust it. You just adjust how long your reins are. You just adjust how much you ask for a big bend in the, in the, in the, 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 in the, in the S. So in the beginning, you might go, oh, okay, I'm gonna do a little one because I think the little one will be more effective. If it isn't, then you do a bigger one. And then you just incrementally change it until you feel that you have success, okay? That's all you have to do. It sounds really, really simplistic, but it, but it in fact really is simplistic, okay? I hope you enjoyed this, guys. I hope that this really opened your eyes a little bit and was a bit more real than normal as well because what I'm really trying to do for you is make it more real. If you're liking this channel, if you're enjoying all of this, please, please, please subscribe. The subscriptions are something we really need. So if you've watched this video and you liked it, please subscribe to us because it really helps us grow our channel and be able to give you guys more and more. I can't wait to talk to you next time, guys. Bye. Mwah!